In this first lecture, we're just going to cover the sort of background premise for transition engineering and sort of look at where, where it's going to go. We're going to look at two things, the premise for the idea of transition engineering and then how it fits sort of in the field uh, that we have now. So the premise is that whenever there's a new opportunity or new problems that a field of engineering emerges, to realize those opportunities or address those problems. And I think it's kind of obvious that that's true, that that happens, but transition engineering, now we're, we're looking at addressing problems which um, are big and complex. And that main problem is that the future is not like the past. That over the last couple hundred years of the industrial revolution, everything has been in engineering about keeping up with growth keeping up with making sure that our railroads were big enough first, that our ships were big enough, and then that our roads were big enough, and then that our cars were fast enough, etc. So now the next 200 years are gonna be about adapting to the limitations, the physical limitations of the resources that we've got. Now that doesn't sound all that positive, but the truth is somebody's got to do it. And I don't know anybody who can change all of the engineered systems that we've got, but engineers. So that's why we're going to do it. There's a precedent for this kind of work, really. The work of changing things which are very successful in order to make them better. And that precedent is safety engineering. 100 years ago, the industrial revolution was well on its way. People were making money hand over fist. Problem? All that success was dangerous. It was really dangerous to the people who worked in factories, was quite dangerous to the people who ate processed foods, to people who worked near boilers, to people who rode on railroads. Actually, something was missing. And that was the idea that you could look for hazards, look for problems ahead of time, assess the risks of those hazards, and then come up with engineering solutions to make them better. I don't think anybody suggests that you could have a 100% safe work environment, but you can always work towards it. And if you study a little bit the history of safety engineering, you'll see that the amount of change that's been made in really profitable systems to make them less of a hazard to the people who have to work in them, you'll see an amazing idea. Again, remember, 100 years ago, that idea didn't exist, that you would look to identify problems, you would assess the risk of those problems, the impact that they might have if they occurred, and then you would just work to prevent what's preventable. That's the kernel of the idea. And you know what? You don't have to wait for a definition of safety in order to do it. Just like safety, sustainability is actually defined when you fail. You either survive or you don't. If you're not sustainable, you won't survive. So you have to look for the things that actually threaten your survival, just like you do with safety. Now, in the last hundred years, we've come a long ways with safety. And in fact, we've extended the ideas of safety and the practices of safety engineering out into other areas like pollution prevention, natural hazards, dealing with our waste, things like that. So what's, what transition engineering is about is about extending even farther into looking into the future and engineering our systems to adapt. It's all about identifying the problems that our existing system is having and will have and then building in adaptive capacity into those systems so that they can adapt to the realities of the future. In the next few lectures, we're gonna talk about how we do that, and we're gonna look at um, how you can get started on projects of your own.